This is JSA TV, your virtual newsroom for telecom professionals. I'm Dean Perrine and welcome to JSA TV. This is our fourth in a series of roundtable discussions that JSA will be releasing this year as we celebrate our 10-year anniversary. Congratulations to us. A quick note before we begin that this roundtable as well as our up upcoming spots are being broadcast via a video broadcast technology that allows JSA to take live feeds from anywhere around the world simultaneously thanks to our friends at BCS Global. The webcast is best viewed on a, a, a Google Chrome desktop browser. And with that, I would like to welcome our online viewers. So uh, welcome online viewers. Hope you enjoy the conversation. All right, so here we go. Uh, today we're gonna be discussing some big things, namely big data and SDN as they converge to enable big networks. I'm honored to introduce our three distinguished panelists. They are Zeev Dreyer. Zeev is the VP of Strategic Marketing for MRV Communications. Mr. Philippe Alvarez. Philippe is the CEO of Axiom Fiber Networks. And lastly, uh, Mr. Christian Koch. Christian is the Director of Global Interconnection at Megaport. Gentlemen, welcome to JSA TV. Okay, let's just gonna, I'm just gonna jump right in here, guys. Um, as SDN and big data are still relatively nascent, exactly how they come together is largely unknown. Uh, where do these concepts meet within your respective organizations? Zeev, we'll start with you. Right, thank you, Dean. So I think uh, as a vendor that passed almost uh, all the turbulence over the last 25 years, it's interesting that the industry is exciting again to the it's definitely shifting towards more open and programmable networks uh, to cope with all the non-deterministic traffic demand. And there are also emerging applications and new business models that really dictate those changes. So as a vendor of multi-layer packet and optical solution that, and service management software, we strongly see this uh, trend of uh, becoming more uh, tangible when looking on the agility, automation, and self-provisioning requirements of uh, new networks. Now, the SDN and the big data require very tight synergy uh, building next generation networks. So when you look on big data that has very essential part of improving network usability and application performances, in fact, the ongoing challenge is, is not only to collect, store, and access the analytics of the network, but to ensure what we can really parse as the enormous database from multi-layer network elements and reflect those actions in SDN central control that will supposed to program the network based on conditional policies, utilization of the network, available capacity, and, and performances. Uh, what we really observed in the, in, in the latest uh, research, at least from the evolution of the SDN itself, is that when looking at different layers and that construct the network, we need service abstraction that will really hide the complexity of underlying technologies and network layers uh, from applications, users of the service, but ensure that the central control will be able to see the pool of networking resources uh, and slice them per demand. So we work with our customers lately on various use cases that enable both sides to, to kind of learn, absorb, and plan new architectures, uh, business cases, and eventually to productize the new environment that really can serve customers. We're also active in various organizations, including the Open Networking Forum, the Metroid the Forum, and also active as part of the Etsy. So I think we're looking on, on the overall uh, ecosystem and, and how the, the things are supposed to be more common and standardized based solutions, now there's some proprietary implementation that some way you see in the marketplace. Thank you, Zeev. And Philippe, what are your thoughts? Uh, they're very uh, straightforward and simple. Uh, for us, I mean, we happen to operate at, uh, call it the physical layer in the pure, purest form. We are an enabler, we interconnect locations. Uh, and I go back to something that uh, Steve said, you know, about non-deterministic traffic. I mean, when you think about that word itself, I mean, the, the underlying requirement to enable, you know, SDM, big data manipulation, all, the, all those nice, you know, complex things, if you will, is you need to be connected, right, at, at, at ground zero, if you will. So you need that fiber connectivity, which is what we provide. So within the organization, it's just like we don't see it at this point as something that we, uh, that we work on at an application layer or higher than a layer two, if you will. Uh, but we do provide that connectivity that allows, you know, that, that control to actually 
have as much bandwidth, if you will, infinite bandwidth, you know, to, uh, you know, for lack of a better term, uh, to transfer the traffic as of, uh, uh, as it's required. I, I think eventually, as we look at some of the things we're working on on custom uh, lit solutions, that'll bring into play quite a bit more of the at a higher level. But for the moment, I mean, look, I mean, we are the interconnectors. We provide the fiber that allows things to happen on top of that fiber. Excellent, Philippe and Christian, you'll have the last say on this question. So we look at things from a different, a little bit different of an angle based on the uh, type of platform that we're providing. Um, as more and more organizations begin to make use of large data sets and really get into big data, uh, the cloud is really proving to be one of the best options available for, for these organizations to store and analyze that data. Uh, most organizations, this is really the perfect opportunity to leverage the power of elastic computing and take advantage of those economics um, that this provides. So uh, big data is really going to drive a need for better connectivity options uh, to transport that data from the sources, whether those are in standalone data centers or co-location facilities, offices, or any other type of product that is producing some type of logs or collecting some type of statistics uh, to be able to send that to that cloud service provider. Um, what we're doing is making it easier for these organizations to connect to multiple cloud services uh, and network services, network service providers. Um, if you need to ch transfer a few terabytes of data for 45 days uh, and can easily scale up that bandwidth or scale down as it's needed. Um, traditionally, you need to go buy a circuit, sign a contract, and uh, go through a painful provisioning process most of the time. But what we're doing is leveraging SCN to uh, change all that. Uh, provisioning, provisioning is completed within minutes, if not seconds, through our, so through our fully defined uh, software platform. Uh, no need to sign long-term contracts, and we're trying to really disrupt the economics of that. Uh, Amazon created Elastic Compute when they introduced AWS to the world 10 years ago, and uh, us at Megaport, we're, tr we're giving the world elastic bandwidth and uh, really bridging that gap between the compute and the big data management. Excellent, Christian. Thank you very much. So is big data management critical to realizing the benefits of next-gen uh, SDN network programmability? And what are the concerns you guys hear from, from the network operators? Christian, we'll stay with you. Yeah, so actually from, from my point of view, I actually don't think big data management is not necessary to realize the benefits. Uh, we're just talking about, when we talk about SDN, we're talking about a programmable network. Um, and that could be uh, programmable from any little amount of things, uh, such as just increased efficiency in the operations and administration, reducing mean time to repair and, and mean time to deploy and mean time between failures. Um, and we're really, we can even look at small gains in deployment and provisioning speed without the use of big data. Adding in big data uh, allows, allows networks and organizations to do more with this, obviously, but uh, I don't think it's actually necessary to realize the benefits. Thank you, Christian. Uh, Zeep? Zeev, your thoughts? Yeah, I think we didn't even touch the, the, the tip of the iceberg in, in terms of the big data. You know, given the fact that the Internet of Things and, and millions and billions of devices will be connected to network, this is a really big issue of scaling. And I can say that, you know, SDN has the power to automate and make, net, make network agile, while the big data is kind of the brain behind the operation of uh, to make networks smarter, to make sure that you're able to scale down and up in the network eventually, but based on very conditional environments. You know, what really happening in this specific flow, which is part of millions of flow. So I think when looking on the big data and the connection, how we collect the information for the SDN environment, uh, that's, that's kind of important thing. However, the complexities evolved in the existing hybrid networks and multi-domain environment creating major three obstacles. You know, we have the span of the same service across multiple networks. There is this interoperability between legacy and new systems and networks. And, and third, the management and orchestration that's still evolving, which means that the standards need, need to evolve here specifically. Uh, a lot of things happening on the open source, obviously, and a lot of things happening in terms of uh, some ecosystem development, but eventually it's still not there. And big data analysis on information uh, among management and control functionality across different management domains uh, to complete the, the overall operational picture of end-to-end -end services. It's critical. Uh, the service components and the supporting network infrastructure that can be physical or also virtual 
is, is really complex and, and not trivial at all if I'm looking on the, the hurdles on the way. Thank you, Zeev. And Philippe? Uh, look, I agree with uh, Zeev and uh, Chris. At the end of the day, I mean, it's just a component of that multi channel stream of <laughs> bandwidth that is hitting uh, is hitting us uh, from a service provider perspective. So when I think about it, I think, look, it's a component of it. You know, we're going to have a whole separate discussion of what is big data. You know, to me, it seems like it's, it's another term for data that was there in the first place with some additional stuff going on in there. But look, I mean, if you look at it from a network operator perspective, I mean, it goes beyond handling the, the front end, the revenue possibilities and enabling better customer service and, you know, uh, giving control to the, to the, to the end user, right. Uh, at the end of the day to get, you know, the, the, to make their apps work uh, better, right. It is really also by virtualizing the network operations, you know, and that comes down to operational savings, uh, physical reduction in space and power. Uh, a lot of things that have probably been happening in the data center to some degree are now starting to spread into what I would call the, the network operator environment. Um, and having that background of the last 15 years, I mean, built a couple of businesses that provide a full service model. It would have been fantastic to have the capability to actually not have to be tied to a specific data center, not have to be tied to a specific location where you're building the bricks and mortar stuff, right? Is breaking all that up and driving those efficiencies, those cost savings. And, you know, in some cases, and I, I mentioned this at Comptel last week at a panel, that, you know, think about the Verizon, right, that has nine central offices south of 59th Street in Manhattan, prime real estate. If you virtualize that, now you're freeing up you know, your resources to focus on things other than maintaining that kind of a brick and mortar infrastructure and probably make some revenue if they sell those properties. I mean, very nice buildings. <laughs> Excellent, Philippe. Thank you very much. And a great segue for me, actually. Uh, as we've discussed, SDN and big data are poised to converge in a way that will redefine how data centers function. But from an in-the-trenches perspective, what do you see the primary roadblocks to meaningful big data SDN convergence, and what is your prediction for seeing it actually implemented in the wild? Philippe, we'll stay with you. Um. Well, obviously, I mean, in the I mean, the fiber business because I see a roadblock in the availability of fiber in some of the geography that we're in, so we're addressing that. And there's other folks out there doing the same thing. So to to, to really fully leverage it, you need virtual connect connectivity virtually everywhere, whether it's wired, fiber, or uh, wireless, if you will. But again, I go back to the network operators. I think the challenge is the fact that the embedded base. The investment that has been made in all these networks with legacy platforms, technologies, and all of that, how do you tie, how do you economically look at it and say, I have all this investment, how do I make this work in this new environment, right? That's number one. Number two is, what does it take for me to enable that economically to do it? And the third part of this thing is real operationally, how do you take, uh, essentially, where you're talking, you're looking at 50 years worth of operating experience in a certain environment, how do you take that and evolve that? You know, it's, it's, it comes down to people, processes, systems. It is a very complex environment to deal with. So when I hear some of the, what are called the incumbents and the former Rbox and those size companies talk about, yeah, we're going to virtualize this, we're going to move to SDN. You know, I kind of laugh a little bit because I look at it and I say, you may be able to do it in pockets, but how do you comprehensively do it? in a way that's meaningful to your to the buyer, essentially. So that's what I see, I mean, uh, from a very, from a service or, uh, provider oriented perspective. Excellent, thank you very much, Philippe. And Christian? Yeah, so uh, um, Philippe nailed a few points already that I'm gonna to touch on, but um, when I look at this, you know, as opposed to a lot of things, people, and, and when I say people, humans are really the roadblock for a, a lot and all things engineering, right? Like Philippe said, um, you've got to do the research, you've got to understand the problem we're trying to solve, and then you've got to go and you've got to create or design a solution. Then you've got to go and get buy-in from leadership and investor and investment partners. Um, and, and then you've got to actually go and build the solution. You know, folks who are operating at massive scale, like Facebook and Google have already done this and have been leveraging big data and SCN for years by building self-healing infrastructure. Uh, so it's only a matter of time before more folks start doing it um, and, and other companies start getting the resources to get these products developed. Excellent, Christian. Great points. And Zeev, you have the final say on this question? Okay. Uh, 
It's in, it's very interesting because when uh, Philip mentioned and uh, the aspect of data centers and how different the environment uh, from the real case of uh, the the incumbents or the telecoms, it, it's it's an, almost a day and night at least if I'm looking on uh, on uh, on the concept and the mindset. And I think uh, the data center and cloud technologies a bit of leapfrog the, the environment, they really advanced uh, a couple of years before the telecoms. They don't have the same problems, they're more IT oriented, which means you have more tools uh, without those tight obstacles of legacy OSS systems so that really tighten, creating the obstacle for, for telecoms to get in. Uh, I think uh, Christian even mentioned the, the people and, and the people it's, it's kind of, if you're looking on seven layers, so the layer eight is the politics, which means the, the organizational problems that you have. Uh, so I think the, the, the overall integration of legacy systems and operational aspects uh, will require uh, more integration of, again, the management tools that they are today, the, one of the biggest obstacles. And in addition to that, the, the industry will need to move more from technology centric to more service centric mindset. I think this is one of the things that you can really see in the data center web scale guys and again the old cloud environment um, but at the end in the big data as a convergence of the two terms this certainly can shape the future uh, but in the mixed environments versus greenfield use case uh, the, the challenges still evolve and the key aspects of scaling the high availability and security by the way security angle which is very important here the more connections you have the more automations you have the more restrictions you will need to do, the more penetration points you might have. So the security has, has tend to be very critical because scaling to millions of services across virtual and physical network elements, uh, especially in a very more dynamic uh, real-time environment, re will require very careful policy planning and control. Uh, the more automation will add to the network, the more tight control will need for, for who, how, and where the security circles will start. In the world of security, you always have those circles that need to mitigate the problems. And eventually, there are many examples uh, that I can give, but again, I don't think we have enough time today. Uh, but on the other hand, I, if I'm looking on the uh, SDN and wider area network between the data center, centers, it's one of the interesting implementation that decoupled the control plane from the optical networking uh, data plane and then enable more intelligent uh, uh, use of again on-demand traffic engineering based on application condition for example this was mentioned before like spikes on video traffic or even data backup services over a specific uh, time of day will require elastic bandwidth services as again automated service or via customer portal that is still evolving in some cases uh, so i think a lot of interesting use cases we can discuss but eventually the, the big differences between the data center a clean or, or greenfield environment is much more easier uh, if I'm looking on, on the overall aspect versus the, the legacy telecom aspects of SDN and the big data. Excellent, Zeev. And guys, really, really great insights on that one. Thank you very much. Um, Zeev, we're going to stay with you. Why don't you tell our viewers where they can find out more about your products and <laughs> services and solutions? Well, in the world of uh, internet, I think the best thing is for, to start from www.mrv.com. Obviously, we have YouTube channel, uh, we have social media tools, and obviously, uh, you can uh, the viewers can uh, also meet us uh, during November in the big uh, Gen 15, the, the Metro Internet Forum event that will happen in Dallas. So we'll be glad to to meet the relevant uh, prospects and also our customers that will visit there and explore uh, those topics in more detail for sure. Awesome. Thank you, Zeev. And Philippe, uh, tell our viewers where they can find more about you. Sure. Uh, the two ways. One is uh, go to our website, actionfiber.com, and you can take a look at our build out our maps, I mean, where we are, uh, what we plan uh, to be. Uh, or you can send me an email at uh, Felipe, F-E-L-I-P-E, -E, at actionfiber.com. Awesome. Christian, you're the last guy. Where do we find All out right. more about you? So if you want to learn more about Megaport, you can head over to megaport.com, uh, at Megaport Network on Twitter, uh, at Megaport on Facebook, um, and I'll be at Capacity uh, Europe show up in Paris next week. If you'd like to meet in person, feel free to just shoot me an email as well at ck at uh, megaport.com. Thank you. Uh 
Outstanding. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us today on JSA TV. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in. Until next time, see you later.